if you are studying psychology, then sooner or later you will run into a concept called called nature versus nurture. And this is something that comes up in many different areas of psychology. And the reason for that is because it's it's directly related to the core questions that we ask as psychologists. So psychologists want to understand they want to understand the mind and they want to understand behavior. In other words, we're we're really curious about what are the underlying reasons for why a person thinks and feels and acts the way that they do? And nature and nurture are just two different ways of answering those kinds of questions. So we can say that someone does what they do because of, because of nature. Or let me just grab a different color here. We can say that someone does what they do because of nurture. So if we're trying to explain someone's behavior in terms of nature, what we're really saying is, all of the psychological characteristics they have, their personality traits, the ways that they tend to behave, and if they have a mental illness, all of those things are, uh, if we're explaining them in terms of nature, we're saying that, that they're an, an inherited characteristic. So these are, this is all about inherited characteristics. In other words, it's stuff that we get from our, from our genes that we inherit from our parents. So I think we tend to usually think about genes in terms of getting our eye color or hair color or height from our parents. But if you think about what genes are, is all, all they are is, is instructions for how to, to build and maintain the body. And of course, the brain is as much a part of the body as anything else is. So your genes also provide at least a basic sort of starting blueprint for, for how your brain should be laid out. And so, so hopefully it makes sense to think, yeah, if, if my genes are a bit different from yours, then that might lead to some starting difference uh, when early on in life in our brains. And so we might end up thinking and feeling and acting differently um, as a result of our genes. So on the one hand, we have our genetic inheritance that we get um, at the moment that we're conceived. But then after that, all kinds of different things can, can go on around us, can happen to us. And that's what, that's what nurture is all about. And the term that psychologists use for all that stuff that's happening, we call it the environment. This is just all the stuff that's going on around you. And I'll even, I'll put that, this is stuff that this is my highly technical definition stuff that goes on around you so for example this could be the social stuff this could be the social environment um, if you grow up surrounded by people who are very caring and loving um, they might provide a, a nurturing social environment and you can see that's where the term here nurture comes from um, on the other hand, of course, you could grow up in a, in a totally uh, cold and uncaring and inhospitable social environment. And again, hopefully it makes sense to think if we come from such different social environments or if we're in very different situations right now, that those things will, will cause us to think and feel and act in very different ways. Now, one thing that I want to make sure to mention before I go any farther is uh, sometimes this term nurture can be a little confusing because it seems to imply that we're just talking about a nurturing social environment. But when we talk about the term nature versus nurture, nurture could be, it's, it's just used to refer to any kind of environment, any of the stuff that's going on around you. So, for example, this could be something as wildly different as the, the chemical environment. Um, so if, if a pregnant mother, for example, drinks some alcohol, that uh, alcohol could get into the fluids surrounding the developing fetus. And that is counts as the environment. That counts as nurture as well and can have a huge impact on that individual's psychological characteristics, in that case, a very detrimental one. But the point is, just don't, don't get confused by the term nurture implying a nurturing environment. It's just any of the stuff that goes on around you. Um, another place where people often get confused with this uh, is with the term nature, because 
in everyday language, we our brains have this link between nature and the environment because we think of things like protecting nature and environmental conservation. And in the everyday use of those terms, that that makes sense. But if you're taking, if you need to take a test on the nature versus nurture concept, and you make that connection, you're going to you're going to actually scramble this and and be thinking about it in the complete opposite way that you should. So this connection, in that sense, is this is very bad. And so you'll probably just need to do a little extra work when you're studying to make sure that you're very clear on, in this sense of the term, you want to have nature tied to your inherited genetic characteristics and nurture tied to characteristics that come from your environment and the things that are, that are happening to you or that are happening around you. So we'll talk about all this in a lot more detail, but, but hopefully that gives you um, a a good starting definition of the term nature and of the term nurture. And before I run out of time, I'd like to draw your attention to this middle term, this versus. And the reason that that is there is because historically, um, we've kind of viewed it as like this epic battle uh, where you have to pick sides and fight it out. Uh, for example, if you are a researcher studying um, studying musical ability. Um, maybe you want to understand how people like Mozart get to be such amazing composers and musicians. Uh, you might, you know, one one side might propose that Mozart gets gets to be the way he is because he's just he's just naturally talented. His natural talent, he's he's gifted. And whenever you hear people use terms like natural talent or being gifted, they're talking about nature. They're talking about your inherited genetic characteristics. And one of the key implications that a lot of people take away from this is that these are characteristics that are, we might say, they're fixed. In other words, we mean they're, they're not changeable. Just like you get certain genes for eye color and for height and you don't have any control over those, these are things that happened that got decided before you were born and so you're just kind of stuck with them in life. And we'll actually see that that's not necessarily the case. Your, your genes are not sort of this, always this inevitable um, uh, determinant of what's going to happen to you. But this is, this is why some people get very angry and then on the other side will come in and say, no, uh, Mozart didn't uh, do that because he had, you know, he didn't become an amazing musician because he had some sort of special musical genes. He did it because he learned to do it. So they will call it a learned, learned behavior, learned ability, learned behavior. Um, and that's something that he learned from his environment. Uh, they'll say, oh, Mozart's father was uh, also a musician and composer, and he drove Mozart to practice very hard. And so that's why Mozart learned to be such a great musician. It wasn't because he had some special genetic inheritance. But hopefully at this point, you can get an idea of why this is such an important and sensitive topic for so many people, because you know we really want to know if if I want to be a musician or an athlete, is, but I don't have the right genes for it, does that mean I can't do it? Uh, or if there's some way I want to avoid being, like if, if my parents had some sort of mental illness, am I inevitably going to get that? So we really care a lot about, and not in some abstract academic sense, but in a, in a very important everyday sense, we want to know, what should I do today? Should I practice my, my piano or will it not do any good because I don't have the right genes for it? And, and by the way, with that uh, specific subject, we'll actually talk about that a lot in a future video about, about developing skills. And it'll turn out that you can actually do a huge amount to work out, to exercise your brain. And, and the right types of practice exercises and the right types of coaching can actually do a huge amount to improve your brain. Much like when you exercise, you work out your muscles and those improve, um, you can do some very similar things for your brain. But, but what we'll see, more generally what we'll see, is that this overall perspective of nature versus nurture is, is sometimes right. So in the next video, I'll give you an example of a behavior that is a condition that is clearly the result of nature only. So the nature folks win in that case. And, and, and I'll also give you an example of something that is clearly the result of nurture only. So the nurture folks win in that case. But but in most cases, that's an oversimplification. And so I'll try to show you that most psychological characteristics come not from nature versus nurture, but we'll be crossing this out and replacing it with and. 
and I'll show you um, a, a specific condition, a real concrete example of something that can only be explained as an interaction between both nature and nurture.